Over the last 10, 20 years, we've seen a change in the way stadiums are designed. It's sort of an arms race in that NFL stadiums have been getting bigger and more elaborate. Each stadium has to have something more or better than the previous one. An NFL stadium nowadays, you're not going to build for under a billion dollars. I think the thing that will shift the mentality away from the we have to spend a billion dollars will be there won't be a billion dollars. The cost to taxpayers was $34.6 million in one year alone. $280 million in taxpayer money on a new arena just six days after the city filed for bankruptcy. There'll be places that it's, it's, it's really hard to just say, OK, if you don't build me a billion dollar stadium, I'll have to move. But over the next 10, 20, 50 years, we're going to see a shift in the way that we think about stadiums. In the new stadium, the stadium of the future, it's a neighborhood that's a completely walkable, completely connected restaurants, bars, meeting areas, suites of all different kinds. The stadium itself will become part of the downtown. If you are making this big investment in this infrastructure, there must be a way to make it more useful to the city and more integrated with the city so that if you're building bars and clubs and things like that into the building that's supposed to support the game day, what if those bars are open, restaurants are open all week? Rotate it around a little bit. This is kind of the current state of the digital model for Roma. I talked to Dan Meese, who's a stadium architect. He's probably best known for designing the Staples Center in Los Angeles. If you can find a location in the city and design the building so that the event spills out, it becomes a big entertainment destination that happens to have an arena. Dan loves this idea of a public square, a public space, taken to an extreme. If he had his way, the best stadium would be no stadium at all. It would be something that is put up just for a particular event and then taken down after and the public space returns to where it was before. Take the event off the pitch, pull it outside of the building and create other reasons for people to be there. Then it becomes lasting beyond you know, the, the game itself. The jockeys ride a difficult course without saddle. So the Palio, called the Palio di Siena, is a horse race that takes place twice a year in a town square in Siena. It's featured at the beginning of the James Bond movie Quantum of Solace. For the entire year, it's the regular town square in Siena. The two days out of the year. They turn this town square into a horse racing track. So I think that there'll be a forced shift to buildings that are transformable. So maybe they grow to 70,000 that day, just like Siena and the Palio, and then they go back to a much smaller manageable venue. I think today's stadiums, um, are by design going to be required to participate more in the communities that they're being designed and constructed in. Populous is a Kansas City-based architecture firm and work on every Super Bowl getting the venue set up for the entertainment aspect. A project that I've been uh, associated with, um, Sporting Park here in Kansas City for um, sporting KC. We really tried to integrate it into the surrounding and make it part of a much bigger whole so it wasn't just an isolated stadium sort of in a field. LA needs a football team. Love to see the Raiders stay but I don't think there's a stadium answer. All the, the proposals in LA are well over a billion dollars and I think that when there's public financing involved I think that it is incumbent upon us as designers to try and find ways to program and integrate the stadium into the community that we're designing it for. Populous took their team of stadium designers and looked at how are we going to design stadiums, what's going to be different, what's going to change. So imagine walking down whatever downtown street it is and you have a law office and you have an office tower. And from the street, it looks like a typical office tower. But then on the back side, 
you're overlooking a sunken football field with a lower bowl that still has 20, 30, 40,000 seats in it. But now that upper bowl is a ring, a ring of shops, restaurants, maybe even a transit center. Part of your field's actually accessible during the week. It's a gathering place. It's a central social area for people to get together. I think that our buildings have to become more adaptable than they have been in the past in order to be able to be whatever it needs to be for whatever event happens to be going on in that stadium at the time. I've done a building in Japan that is a 20,000 seat arena that can expand to a 30,000 seat soccer stadium. If that became the norm and people realize that, well, we're not going to get a billion dollars just to build a football stadium. and. $800 million to build a baseball stadium and $500 million to build an arena, they'll think differently. We'll have to.